with the upcoming release of Gretel and Hansel, I thought it seemed an appropriate time to discuss the fairy tale it's based on, from the Brothers Grimm, Hansel and Gretel. It might seem odd that I'd discuss something that's often understood to be aimed at kids, but the reality is that many of the tales from the Brothers Grimm have mature themes that are actually extremely interesting when you delve into them. So if you're wondering what we can take away from Hansel and Gretel about responsibility, maturity and greed, then you will find this video of interest as I discuss some of the psychology and philosophy of the story. As far as the film, Gretel and Hansel goes, it's yet to be released and I don't know what to expect from it, other than it's clearly not aimed at a young audience and will be delving into some of the dark themes of the original tale. And for anyone interested, seeing as it's been a source of confusion and a popular meme, the film switched the names of the characters around because Gretel is going to be the main focus of the story. If you don't know the story of Hansel and Gretel, I would recommend reading it, as it can be quite fascinating. To give a quick summary, a woodcutter and his wife are struggling in poverty, and so the wife, stepmother to the two children, suggests they abandon the children in a forest to fend for themselves. Here, the children come across a home made of food, where they begin to eat as they starve. Inside, a witch sees them, and feeds them incessantly, with the intent to fatten up Hansel so that she can eat him. Gretel catches on to her ploy, and tricks her, eventually leading to the witch's death in an oven that she intended to cook Hansel in. The children find great wealth in the witch's home, which they eventually take home to their father to save the family, with their stepmother having passed away. For some, myself included so we'll go in with this presumption in my later points, the stepmother and the witch are one and the same. This isn't actually clear in the story, but given the witch is killed and the evil stepmother mysteriously dies, it would make sense. So, what can we take away from Hansel and Gretel? The importance of food it's undeniable that food plays an important role in the story of Hansel and Gretel, and its symbolic meaning is rather critical to the events that unfold. It's the reason why Hansel and Gretel are initially abandoned by their parents, and the reason for greed throughout the course of the story. However, equally so, food, often specifically bread, represents the material sustenance needed to survive in life, which can bring both life, but also death if we let it depending on the motivations of the individual. When scarce, it can cause us to do acts of evil, which is thematically constant in Hansel and Gretel. As parents abandon children when they lack bread, the children act in accordance with greed on seeing the house, rather than treading carefully, and the witch is the embodiment of evil, or a monster, that comes when you allow greed to consume you. Fundamentally, it serves as a warning that when lacking, people are capable of doing some horrendous things, seeing them devolve as humans, on the path to becoming a monster. This is what happens with the children's father, the children themselves and of course the wicked witch. Now beyond this it's hard to ignore the religious allegories of Hansel and Gretel. In the Christian faith, bread is eaten as the body of Christ, so in the story, bread also represents God with the characters acting in sin as they lack God in their lives. Feeling Abandoned The story of Hansel and Gretel has a great theme of maturity for children, and this stems from being abandoned by their parents. Now it's worth mentioning that the stepmother actually tried to abandon the children twice in the story, failing on the first attempt as Hansel was able to collect some white stones, or pebbles, to trace the route back home. White is often a colour that's associated with innocence and purity in mythology or any works, but where it's particularly interesting is the white stones can be symbolic of a child's unwillingness to change in psychology. So not only are the children represented as pure and innocent at the start, but when the children return home with the use of the white stones, this can equally be construed as their unwillingness to move away from childhood. This is fairly common in life. Many fear abandonment from their loved ones and this is particularly common amongst children, who can have nightmares where they lose their parents. However, what's equally important here is that as part of the growth, an individual must be willing to depart the nest, so to speak, to experience the world and confront that which they fear in order to mature, just as seen with Hansel and Gretel. In the case of the story, 
This is shown as a spiritual journey for the children, as they leave the safety of their home with their father, who at this point has been seduced by the devil, or the evil stepmother, and they encounter and confront the devil in the forest in the form of the witch. The Spirit of the Birds Birds are regularly seen in the story of Hansel and Gretel, representing many things including direction and freedom. In the first instance, they are the first reason Hansel and Gretel can't return home after abandonment, as Hansel uses breadcrumbs to try and lay a path home, only to find the birds have eaten the crumbs. While with the witch, Hansel uses the bone of a bird to survive from being eaten and eventually, it's a bird that helps the children return home to their father. This can be viewed in a number of ways, such as birds represent the need of support of others in life to help us in our journey. However, I think the most important representation is that birds identify as the spirit in life, whether it be the spirit of God or the human spirit. It's this spirit that first prevented Hansel and Gretel returning home whilst still immature, while it acted as a guide to help them return home once they had completed their journey. This can also be seen as the spirit of God, as it protected them when they confronted the devil, in the form of the witch. Forgiveness on their way home, Hansel and Gretel are faced with a body of water that they must cross before they complete their journey. They've confronted the devil in the form of the witch, and the water represents what they must do to complete their journey. Now, the water can be identified in a couple of ways. In Greek mythology, Hades is known to have five rivers, one of which is the Styx, which represents hate. In this case, as the children cross the water, it can be understood as a way of overcoming their hate, or anger, for their father who agreed to abandon them, thus representing forgiveness, something we all have to do in our lives at some point or another. Another understanding of the water is a form of baptism, as having dealt with missing God or bread in their lives early on, and then almost succumbing to the devil, the witch in the story. The children complete their journey to embracing God through the form of baptism, with holy water. It's only after this act of traversing through water that Hansel and Gretel complete their journey in the story, returning home to their forgiven father, who is no longer being influenced by the devil. Maturity, Forgiveness and Responsibility So with all of the previous points, we come to understand that the story of Hansel and Gretel is a spiritual journey the children embark on from being innocent but naive, to coming to confront the devil and embracing God. Religious allegories aside, this can be understood as meaning they have to confront corrupting forces in the world in order to mature and take on responsibility in their lives, something we all have to do at times. However, it's in their maturity and embracement of responsibility that not only do they strengthen as individuals, but they're actually capable of caring for others, namely their father, with the wealth they find in the witch's hut. It's also through developing their resolve and maturing that they find the power to forgive their father who abandoned them, a sign of how they've matured and understood the meaning and importance of their journey. So with everything said, Hansel and Gretel, and hopefully Gretel and Hansel, is a deep but interesting metaphor for our lives on becoming responsible, mature and forgiving people who strive to the betterment of mankind. There's still much more symbolised in Hansel and Gretel, can you think of any that's not been discussed? For example, how Hansel and Gretel represent the masculine and feminine sides of ourselves? Let me know in the comments. Please like, share and subscribe as we help you live life on your terms, don't forget to hit the bell icon to ensure YouTube notifies you of the latest uploads, thanks for watching.